So I found a book. It's pretty famous uh, in certain circles. The Golden Dawn talks about a, um, the, the great blowout spiritual experience. And I wanted to read it because it is just so stinking interesting. And it go, it's the experience that where you see the world made of light and living, you know, living light. And uh, it's the goal of Taoist alchemy and pretty much all alchemy around the world. Turning lead into gold, turning the base, you know, world we live in into a golden light. So when he's, it goes, it's on page 15. So that's where it starts. It goes to 16 too. Symptomatic of this stage of interior growth is the utter transformation that comes over what previously appeared to be the chaos, the darkness, and the gates of the land of night. While man is assumed into godhood and the divine spirit is brought down into manhood, a new heaven and a new earth make their appearance and familiar objects take on a divine radiance as though illumined by an internal spiritual light. And this is what, in part at any rate, was meant by the old alchemists for finding of the philosopher's stone. And it converts all base metals into the purest gold. In his book, Centuries of Meditations, Thomas Traherne gives an interesting description of the rapture of the inner personality, its reaction to the world, when it is freed by the mystical experience from all entanglements. He says, the corn was orient and immortal wheat, which should never be reaped, nor was ever sown. I thought it had stood from everlasting to everlasting. The dust and the stones of the street were as precious as gold. The gates were at first the end of the world. The green trees, when I saw them first, through one of the gates transported and ravished me. Their sweetness and unusual beauty made my heart leap and almost mad with ecstasy. They were such strange and wonderful things. The men, oh, what venerable and reverent creatures do the aged seem, immortal cherubim, and the young men glittering and sparkling angels and made strange seraphic pieces of life and beauty. Boys and girls tumbling in the street and playing were moving jewels. I knew not that I knew not that they were born or should die, but all things abided eternally as they were in their proper places. Eternity was manifest in the light of the day and something infinite beyond everything appeared. And I think what he's talking about there is the soul of all things. You can see it flowing into everything. And then um, it goes on to say all appeared new and strange at first. This is um, another, that was Terhern. All appeared new and strange at first, inexpressibly rare and delightful and beautiful. I was a little stranger, which at my entrance into the world was saluted and surrounded with innumerable joys. My knowledge was divine. I knew by intuition those things, which since my apostasy, which I have no idea what that means, because I really don't know this guy, but he must have obviously fell away from the church. I collected again by the highest reason. My very ignorance was advantageous. I seemed as but I seemed as one bought brought into the state of innocence. All things were spotless and pure and glorious, yea, with infinite was infinitely mine and joyous and precious. I knew not that there were any sins or complaints or laws. I dreamed not of poverties, contentions, or vices. All tears and quarrels were hidden from my eyes. Everything was at rest, free and immortal. I knew nothing of sickness or death or exaction. In the absence of these, I was entertained like an angel with the works of God and their splendor and glory. I saw all the peace of Eden. All time was eternity and a perpetual Sabbath. That's, you know, a good Western alchemist's view of, you know, that spiritual experience that Taoist alchemy and all alchemy really is trying to bring to, bring to you. And, um, it's really doesn't have to take years and years of meditation. If it takes years and years of doing something wrong, it should be done in probably one year at the most. And if you screw that up, you could probably do it the next year from what you learned. And, uh, you know, the alchemy has started at, um, and you usually March or April, it begins in the Aries, the sign of Aries, and it ends in uh, Leo, um, the hundred days. I mean, that's what it should take. It should take 100 days, but it's very specific on what you're supposed to do and um, when you start, when it finishes, pretty much if you can get it started, it's gonna finish itself. But there is, you, know, you do have to meditate and you do have to do the breathing exercises and stuff. So, you know, it'll make it seem like it's super, super easy, but 
you, know, you can't do it when you're you know 10 years old and you can't do it probably when you're 80 but it's been done like i think um the founder of tai chi uh, he was 86 or something when he uh, finally got it you know he went off in the mountains to practice and just kept you know one year he'd uh try it and screw it up and then do the next year with a little bit more knowledge and you know he you know achieved it 86 years old so good on him and uh good on all of us who uh do it later i mean i did i think i was 28 27 28 it was 1994 but anyway i just thought i'd read that to you and uh hopefully you know that helps you understand that it's not just Taoist alchemy that can bring this to you but you know the western esoteric tradition is uh pretty deep into it too the roman catholic church has got books about books on this stuff and um you know, most people just don't read them because, oh, no, it's Catholic, you know, and people don't want to be told what to do. So they try their own stuff and never succeed. But anyway, there you go. I hope everyone's having a great day. Um, remember, I wrote a book on Taoist alchemy. I hope you buy it. I'll put the link in the description below because, you know, I want to promote my book and I want to push Taoist alchemy and Taiji Kwan throughout the entire world. And uh, anyway, have a great day.